Welcome back to Adobe Photoshop. I am excited today to talk about the generative fill option now officially part of the released version of Photoshop. It is no longer in beta. It's now here for all of us to use and enjoy. So I talked about the contextual toolbar as a new added feature in Photoshop. So this is just this little bar that now floats around. It's an extension of your properties panel. It gives the most popular properties panel options available so you don't have to go all the way to your properties panel all the time. You have this nice handy dandy toolbar that you can drag around and use. I talked about that a little bit earlier on in the class. I wanted to bring that up so if you saw me with lessons not using the contextual toolbar that you know that I was just using a version before this updated version. So Adobe is always finding ways to make our life easier and uh, increase our productivity by reducing the amount of time we're going back and forth with options. So with that being said, I want to talk about it because um, generative fill is going to be on this contextual toolbar. And if you don't see the contextual toolbar, make sure you go up to window and make sure that contextual taskbar is checked. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and get started with our first image. So we have, I just picked an image of water because I wanted to generate some sailboats in this beautiful thing of water. So how do we just pop up some sailboats using AI? So what I'm going to do, and shape matters a lot with the generative fill option, but we'll go over that in a minute. So I'm going to zoom in on the water and I'm just going to grab the lasso tool. We're going to use the lasso tool a lot with this. And I'm going to draw a boat about the size that I want to have. So I'm just going to do a lasso tool and just do a little boat here. That's where I want it in the water. I don't want it in the foreground or the background. I want it in the midground. So all of a sudden your contextual toolbar will pop up with generative fill and now type whatever you'd like to generate. And this is when prompt writing really comes into play and practicing and learning about prompt writing and other AI programs can be beneficial. And I have a lot of experience using Midjourney, um, so that has really helped me learn how to write prompts. But it's a lot easier than Midjourney. I don't have to put on the, all these specific, uh, specific uh, inputs like I did there. This is just type a sentence. It's very plain English. Uh, and actually, speaking of which, it actually does lots of other languages other than English. So you can type in Spanish prompt and it'll actually work. I think it uh, several languages that Adobe has used it for. But anyway, so I can type in very simple, like I'm talking to somebody. Um, so let's say I want a boat and I can do something simple like a boat. I don't even have to put A. You just put, I want a boat. So I'm going to press enter and it's going to generate three different options for me. So it's generating, and of course these little tips they give are actually kind of helpful, so I like to read them because you have to wait a lot. You're going to be waiting a lot with uh, some of these, and I'm going to speed up the generation uh, bar a little bit so you don't have to sit there and wait with me the whole time. So it generated three different boats, and you can toggle through these, so that's the first one. That's the second one, which um, this is going to be the truth of their generative fill. It's still a work in progress. They're still trying to improve. It's not going to give you exactly what you want. But of course, all we said was boat. We didn't want, we didn't say we wanted a wooden boat, a fishing boat, a commercial boat. We just said boat. So it had no clue what to give us. So it gave us three totally random options. The more specific we are with our prompts, the more accurate it will become. So instead of having to redraw my little selection, it allows you to type in and refine your prompt. And if you don't like what you got, you can just press generate again, and it's going to generate three additional new images, but also keep your other three images. And you can continue to generate and generate until you get 20 options and figure out which one you like. And you see how over here in variations, you can go through all your variations, and they do take up a lot of space on your hard drive. So if you notice you're generating 20 boats and you found the one you want, you could delete some of these other variations that you don't want. So if you save the file, your file size is not going to be super large. So now I have six different boats. Um, some of these are a little bit better and some of them work. So let's say I want to be more specific. So instead of just a boat, I could type in an entirely different refined prompt. I want a sail, a wooden, no, let's see. Let's say I want a sailboat with blue sails. Okay, that's, that's more specific. Now it's only going to generate sailboats. And remember when I said that size matters? 
So when I did this little uh, selection point, I did like a, a, an oval. So now it's going to do sailboats, but notice how the sails are put away. You know, a sailboat's kind of more of a triangle shape, isn't it? So it's not going to really generate what I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and delete this layer and start over again, and it deletes all the variations too. So what now I want to do is I want to get more specific. I want to do a triangle because that's what uh, sailboats are. They're triangles. So I'm going to do a triangle and it's going to generate within the triangle, but the shape matters a whole lot here. So I'm going to do sailboat with blue sails and let's see what it comes up with. And it's probably going to generate a better response because I made the shape and what it would be in the end is a triangle shape. So that is much, much better. Let's go ahead and click on the other ones. See that kind of ignored my blue, blue, blue sail. Uh, but this one didn't, but it didn't quite get the sail fully up. So I could do sailboat with sails fully open. Not sure if that's going to be better. This is definitely trial and error. Um, I know some people do YouTube videos and they only do the things that work well and it looks so amazing that it works perfectly all the time but it's not always going to generate exactly what you're looking for. It's still a work in progress. So let's generate some other things, to kind of show the power of this. So here's what I'm going to do. So I want to create a foreground. I want to create a little landing of grass right here. So I'm going to take, and you can do any selection tool when it comes to generative fill. So I can use lasso tool, magnetic lasso tool, anything that selects an object you can use as your borders. So I want to take uh, the rectangular marquee tool and I would like to have a nice field of flowers right here. So I'm just drawing a rectangle and then to the generative fill, I'm going to type in, let me see if I can't pin that because that's getting a little crazy. So I'm going to pin the bar and I'm going to type in a field, just field. I'm not describing what the field looks like. I'm just typing in field, super basic. And what I like to do is start basic and then I refine my prompt each time, each round. Hey, that's pretty awesome. You know what it did? It, it re recognized there's water there and it created, it interacted with the water. And that's what's so great about this generative fill tools. It takes in effect what's in the background. Uh, so it didn't just pop in a random field and a rectangle. It decided to integrate it within the water by looking like it's going down into the water. So that's the first one. They decided to put a man there. I didn't ask for a man. I just asked it for a field, but they decided to put a man in there. So some, not all of these are going to work. That one actually works out really well. I like this one. So I'm going to keep it. Uh, but let's say I want to have a little boy fishing because why not? We're learning this tool. So let's take the lasso tool. And instead of just doing some random shape like this, I don't think a boy is going to fishing is going to fit really good into the shape. I'm going to create kind of a shape of a boy that I want to have. And it's not going to generate anything outside of your border. So it's not even going to touch anything outside. It's only going to generate within your frame that you drew. So I'm going to do a little boy fishing. Of course, you know, that one looks a little bit strange. You know, just the perspective's a little off. So you can continue to generate. So a little boy fishing with a blue shirt. And it also will incorporate the lighting. So you see the lighting source coming from the upper right. It will also integrate that within your subject matter. So anytime you do a generation um, fill, it's going to take an effect. Uh, it's going to factor in every image that is below it. So let's do like a little duck right here, just a tiny duck, and we're going to type in. You can continue to do, do this over and over. You can basically recreate an entire image if you want to. You can add mountains, a duck. We didn't say if it was swimming or flying, so we want to say a duck or duck swimming and it might come up with more accurate responses than just duck. You got to kind of tell it what kind of duck, what do you want the duck to be doing? And let's say, okay, I want a duck a little bit bigger. So let's do it more in the foreground, make it bigger and type in duck. There we go. That is little duck. You can figure out, notice how it did and noticed it was on water. We didn't have to tell it was on water, it just detected the water and the background and it made a reflection. So I think that's incredibly smart, kind of scary at the same time that it kind of knows exactly how to do the shadows on the foot of this boy and the lighting. It's just, it's really, really kind of blows your mind. 
So let's say we want to add uh, some bird flying birds in the sky. Okay. So now it's going to take images of birds in the sky. So it's probably going to generate a better result. So there's just some very basics of the generative fill option that you can do. And each time I create a new selection and do generative fill, it creates a new layer that can be toggled on and off in visibility. So let's say I created all that and I don't really like the birds that generate in the middle. I can delete this layer or toggle it off, all these on and off, and it still has the original image at the bottom. So what I want you to do is I want you to get some water and I want you to add some very basic things using uh, the select, do the lasso tool. Let's start off with the lasso tool and just create some shapes and notice how the shape will change your results and try to create kind of a little bit more of a basic shape of the subject matter you want to exist in there. So I want you to add boats, anything you want to add on the water. You can add a dog swimming, you can add a dock if you want to, you can add a field, you can add an island um, in the middle of it if you want to. Um, so I would definitely do that as kind of your first little project. Get used to just getting the lasso tool, creating your very first um, generative fill object on water.